what was it like in 2020 being in the bubble? <clears throat> it was the greatest professional experience of my career that I would never want to do again or wish upon anybody else. I think that there's still some like PTSD. I think there's still some lagging mental uh, issues with that. Um, I was there for more than 90 days on in the inner, 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 inner bubble where for the first seven days that you were in the bubble, you could not leave your hotel room. And it was not some luxurious hotel room. Um, not that we had it hard, but, but part of it was eventually feeling and recognizing like you went in wondering, am I, am I going to die? Like, cause we didn't, we still didn't know totally about COVID, yeah. you know, in late July at that point. And then very quickly realizing that this was the safest place literally on earth, literally on earth. And your family and friends were all on the outside, not with this same protection, because you literally felt like there was a bubble around you. Um, and then from a career standpoint, the stuff that we saw from before we even get to basketball, the political statements, the social unrest, the players threatening to leave at one point. Um, and then you get to basketball and it was some of the most competitive, best basketball we've ever seen. Like it was phenomenal all while, like I get so juiced up in games. Like last night, like I take a deep breath right before I'm about to go on air every time. And like, I get this calming sense over my body. It sounds so cliche and dumb and cheesy, but it's just like, I, I just feel like. I feel like I'm at home, like when I'm in an NBA arena with 20,000 people screaming and people going nuts. I was watching the best basketball of my life in the most sterile, weird environment ever. Like the NBA finals were going around. Jimmy Butler's diving into, you know, the stanchion and stuff like that. And I'm like, like, am I really watching this? It was so surreal. It was so, so crazy. Did you almost being in, in one location for, for 90 days at, at that point and, and kind of stuck inside the bubble. And obviously there, there were a lot of people going through a lot of real hardships at that time. Yeah. So like, I understand that we are, we're talking about basketball, but still, right. was it challenging being in one location? Like, did you, did you lose track of time being there for 90 days? Oh yeah. And, and the craziest part is like during the NBA season now or, or before before the bubble and since the bubble, like I know what day of the week it is based on what games are on what channel, what network, right? Right. Like if it's a Tuesday, it's a TNT, it's a TNT game. So I know it's Tuesday, right? Like, so I know if there's an NBA game on tonight on TNT, I know it's a Tuesday. If it's yeah. a Wednesday, Friday, I know it's an ESPN. I know, you know, if it's an ESPN game, I know it's a Wednesday or Friday, right? Like, so, and then, so we were on like every day of the week. I, I there were sometimes there, I, I forget the exact number, but like, I did something crazy like, um, I don't know, like eight games in four days or eight games and I, I don't remember what it was, but like, it, yeah, you, it was a total time warp. Um, and it, it got to be so like, like just repetitious of the same day of like, wake up, go get breakfast, you know, walk, see the same people. It felt like ground the movie Groundhog's Day. We're like, go wake up, get breakfast at the same location, go to shoot around, talk to the same people. Um, you know, come back, have a production meeting, get dressed, uh, run to the bus to make sure you don't miss it. Cause if you miss it, then you're not getting to the game and there's no other way there. Um, get on the bus, drive the same route a million times back and forth to, to, to the arena. Um, and then, and then call the game. And it was just, it was the same thing over and over and over again for 90 some odd days.